Will you still love me when I'm no longer young and beautiful? Will you still love me when I've got nothing but my aching soul? I know you will. I know you will. I know you will. Ouch. Ouch. Seriously? Like, I know you love me, but would you still love me when I'm no longer young and beautiful? That's the question. So I'm going to start by stating that I don't often read books with protagonists that are over 50 years old. So yeah, this list is as much for you as it is for me to turn back to in order to get myself to read more books with older protagonists. And we'll start things off with deference. Seriously, no respect, zero, zilch, none whatsoever. Yes. Chew the pin banner, okay? Chew it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. We'll start things off with deference by Lila Mina, which is, dude, no respect, none. Will you be doing this in every single video? Every one of them? Every one of them? He ignores me. But then I turn my head and then it starts chewing on my hair. Case in point. Ouch. Do you know, let me just go back. Okay, fine. Chew, because we'll start with deference by Lila Mina, which has, get this, it's BDSM. It has a polyamorous triad. Yes, you heard that right. A polyamorous triad. And it's LGBTQ+. Like, BDSM, polyamorous, triad with triad, LGBTQ plus with older characters. You have one of the characters who is in her 30s who enters a BDSM relationship with a martial arts trainer who is in his 50s. What just happened? I didn't grab him early enough. It's true, whatever it was that he, he found. Fingers crossed there's nothing. <sighs> this cat this cat anyway as i was saying right bdsm relationship older characters one of the lead, one of the lead characters is in her 30s and she enters this bdsm relationship with a martial arts teacher slash trainer who is in his 50s and his wife right so you have her lana martin then you have the martial arts instructor honda and you have his wife yuki who is in her 40s so it's a triad relationship between a 30-year-old, a 40-year-old, and a 50-year-old, and it's just polyamorous and amazing. Like, 50 shades of grey move. Deference is on the house. Now, one character who says, move over, get out the way, get out the way, to a cheating slime ball of a husband is 52-year-old Bernadine Brown in Bring on the Blessings by Beverly Jenkins, who, when she finds out that her husband has been cheating on her with his secretary, walks away with a divorce and, get this, a $275 million settlement. You did not hear that wrong. My sis, good sis, walked away with 275 million dollars that's like six zeros that's one two three four that's six zeros in total that's like nine figures in divorce settlements we love to see it so she walks away with that divorce and uh, with that divorce settlement and she wonders what exactly can i do with this amount of money because who would have thought that I would hit a jackpot because my husband cannot keep his pants zipped up? So, she decides to buy Henry Adams, which is one of the last surviving townships that was established by freed slaves. And um, unfortunately, the township is going through financial hard times. It's the reason why it was put up for sale and... Bernadine buys it and together with the mayor, she sets about preserving the town's legacy and helping the young kids in the town who need a second chance and someone who can believe in them and Bernadine is that person like I'm picking clearly I'm going to pick up this book also because I repeat she walked away with 275 million moolahs 
275 million. We love to see it. So next up is Hammered by Elizabeth Beer, which follows the, which is the first book in the Jenny K series, which follows, as you might have guessed it, Jenny Case, of course. Now, Jenny is former Special Forces who is turning 50 in a month. She turns 50 in the course of the book, so she does still fit the prompt. Um, She's turning 50 in a month, and my girl is tired. She's giving body and soul to, you know, the government. She sacrificed so much, and right now she's just, she's just dealing with the pains, the pains of growing old, the pains of all the prosthetics in her body, because half of her nervous system is man-made. So she's dealing with all the prosthetics in her body and just trying to, you know, balance that, juggle that, and as far as she's concerned, she's done her time, she's given her service, she's done. But when a scientist sets his eyes on her as the perfect test subject for some experiments is working and wants to bring her in, Jenny has to fight for her life and fight for the right to have control over it. And she does that you know, amazingly well with the help of some friends. So yes, this book has some really tight friendships in it. I would like to say that I forgot to mention Bring On The Blessings would also work for, you know, our white supremacy prom because this is a township that was established by freed slaves. So it only makes sense that that works. And Hammered would also work for the ableism prompts because like I said, Jenny is half, she's half made up of prosthetics, you know, due to, the life she's lived as a special forces agent and all the injuries and everything that she's had to deal with throughout the course of that. So, yes. Now, next up is a work that was given to us by Terry McMillan, who I'm certain, if that name sounds familiar to you, you'd be like, why does that name sound familiar? Well, one, she gave us Waiting to Exhale, you know, that followed women in their 30s. Then she gave us How Stella Got Her Groove Back, which followed a woman in her 40s. And now we are following a woman in her 50s, Dr. Georgia Young, who is feeling stuck in her life at 55. And so what does she do? She quits her job. She moves houses and takes a chance on the person she wants to be and ends up finding both herself and a second chance at love. Now hers is a story that reminds us that it's never too late for you to pursue, go after your dreams, to try and create a world, a life for yourself that you would love and enjoy. And I am smiling so hard right now because I love that and I cannot wait to read this book. So, um, yeah. Next up is At Your Service by Sandra Antonelli, which features an older woman romance. Yes, like even older than the older that we're already talking about because we follow May, who is the butler, you know, of the former British military officer, Major Kit, who is 45. Um, I forgot to mention that May is 50 and Major Kit is 45 and absolutely in love with her scrambled eggs nobody does it the way she does and also utterly in love with me herself and is perfectly fine pining after his butler who happens to still be in love with her dead husband you know and is just living her own life but when it is that the trust fund that her husband, her late husband, left for her, when that trust fund disappears and May finds herself killing one of the many assassins that was sent after her, um, Kit has to drop the disguise of his military, former British military persona and reveal what he actually does for a living. My guy is a spy. So yes, you have an older woman romance, you have a female butler, you have the man being the one in love with the woman, which is already a change on the old dynamic, and you have a spy. What's not to love? What is not to love? This book has my name on it. I can, I, I, I assure you that this book has my name on it. Another book that has practically all the books on this list have my name on it. But um, next up is The Writing Class. Yes, The Writing Class by Jean C. Willett, which follows Amy Gallup, Mary Jo. I know, I was just like, <gasps> yeah, I'm a surprise at you. But anyway, <laughs> follows Amy Gallup, who um, was a writer. And I say was a writer because she found fame at 22 and that was 
kind of a peak for her because after the fame she discovered from the book she released at 22 she has not met that level of fame again ever since she was 22 and right now she is retired and she's teaching a writing class at a um, university is a university satellite campus with quite the eclectic collection of students one of whom kills somebody kills another person and now it is up to amy to try and decode which of her students is actually the killer through their writing and for her to do so she employs the help and aid of her students i know yes a student one of whom she knows is a murderer so it's a case of all of them are trying to figure out exactly which one of them is the murderer through the writing and i'm just tell me that does not sound convoluted and also amazing at the same time because it does to me next up is remnant population by elizabeth moon now i saw the word remnant and all i was just thinking i flashed back to mass effect andromeda because there was a lot of remnants Remnant tech, remnant talk, remnant this, remnant that in that game. But anyway, I distract, I digress and I distract myself. Um, the lead character in Remnant Population, I fucks with her. Like, I fucks with her really, really hard because see this woman ophelia ophelia has been living on this alien planet for the past 40 years, you know, um, uh, which saw her, you know live with her husband she buries her husband she raises her single child and in turn is raised by said single child when she grows older and she's standing her garden she's gotten used to this life until some corporate goons who have some sort of control over the planet insist that oh they are relocating and moving everybody on the planet to another planet a planet that they have no idea about and basically these corporate goons are like you don't have a choice with regards where we're taking you you don't have a choice period ophelia is like fuck that shit i'm not about that fucking life i am going to stay right here on this fucking ass planet and die on this fucking ass planet and there ain't nothing all of you all are gonna do about that so yes the corporation moves everybody else but ophelia who now has this entire planet to herself like her skin is glowing she's standing herself she's living her best life she's like what the hell people are highly overrated see me see this life see this glow so yeah yeah baby so she's glowing and radiant and happy until a ship that was sent to do some reconnaissance um activity on the planet the entire crew of that ship she finds them murdered and that is when she realizes that hold up she might not be the only person living on this planet after all dun 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 still we know that that grandma is gonna kick ass like i love ophelia so um yeah remnant population made this list i can't wait to read that book and then you know sometimes you just need a book to remind you to take pleasures in the simple things of life you know and that is that is what we get in the years of pleasure by elizabeth berg where we follow better nolan who after her husband dies packs up all her shit and moves to a small town in order to you know take a breather take a break and take pleasures in a simple daily life routines you know from running a warm bath to nature to music to good food to friends and art and as someone who has felt like i i've I am home right on a Saturday morning sitting in my veranda crickets all around me who has um ouch why are you biting me someone is very very needy who by the way wants all my attention now you want to chew my wristwatch thank you thank you thank you very much oh now you want to go down choose what do you want to do I don't speak hat stop pushing my tripod <sighs> sorry it went all whatever blame it on the cat okay what was i saying <sighs> yes who as someone my as someone who you know has woken up on a saturday morning sat in my veranda cricket all around me watched the sun just about rising over the the miniature farm that my neighbors planted i just i have felt the pleasure and the satisfaction 
and the peace of a moment like that. So this book calls to me. It really does. Another book that calls to me is Brit Marie Was Here by Frederick Blackman. Yes, I know Frederick Blackman. Again, for those that don't know, I did pick A Man Called Ove for my last year's um, ageism prompt because I also did fuck ageism last year as well. I'm going to leave the link to that video in the description bar so you can check it out because I do have some books on that list that I, I didn't want to repeat books, so none of the books that are on that list are on this list. So just, you can go check out that list as well, but yes. So, um, Frederick Blackman, uh, Brit Marie is fastidious, and she's also someone that likes to run commentary, which a lot of people take as criticism, even though that's not actually what Brit Marie means. You know, it's coming from a good place for her. And when it is that she walks in on her husband, cheating on her she walks away finds herself in the town of borg um a place where a warm nature is finally able to shine through and the imagination that she has because brit marie has quite the imagination her imagination is allowed to take flight and she becomes the caretaker of this recreation center whereby you know she's dealing with all the shenanigans of the other elderly residents like herself present in the recreation center and she also has, finds herself having to motivate this untalented group of ch ch um, child soccer players you know to get them to win so it's it's an interesting life, but it's a life that I absolutely want to read all about, you know, so Brit Marie was here. Yes. Next up is Apples Should Be Red by Penny Watson, which I have not eaten anywhere that I absolutely adore enemies to lovers. Like that is my favorite trope, period. I absolutely adore that trope. So enemy to lovers is bay. Enemies to lovers is bay. And the enemies in this case though are older right you have beverly who is 59 and tom who is 62 now beverly's daughter is married to tom's son and both beverly and tom they do not get along they cannot stand each other at all and when a twist of fate has it that beverly has to move in with tom their children are fucking worried and terrified rightfully so because they're like oh my god our parents are going to kill each other turns out that the children should have been worried about something else entirely different because their parents start to bone and boy do they have an active sex life yes older people love to have sex we are thankful that penny watson drives that point home we love to see it absolutely love to see it but if it is that you're not in the mood for romance and you rather have like more of a thriller then you might consider picking up two kinds of truth by michael connelly which is the 20th book in the ari bosch series yes i said 20th but you don't have to like the series doesn't need to be read in order so you can start from book 20 um where we follow harry who is definitely now a much 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 rich older retired former you know retired lapd detective so is retired now is also currently volunteering his help to the san fernando um, police department who are currently trying to solve a murder right and whilst he's dealing with that one of the many criminals that he put away one of the many murderers that he put away is now alleging that ari set him up right framed him for the crime and that he has evidence and now ari has to be working on these two cases simultaneously these two cases that initially seem unconnected and unrelated but as the story goes turns out that they might not be as unrelated as harry thought after all so if you like your crime detective stories maybe consider this if you want still that same like thriller mystery but on a lighter note a lighter scale um consider picking up antipodi and the sicilian lions by mario giordano which yes yeah, see antipodi for her 60th birthday decides that yo my ass wants to relocate to sicily antipodi already you're a fave so antipodi decides to relocate to sicily for her 60th birthday and she's just all about I'm going to retire and be just glamorous and amazing and just enjoy this retirement but circumstances 
the state of matters that be would not just let Antipodi live, would not let this woman live because, see, the cute Andy man that she saw and is like, oh, that boy is cute. He goes missing. And while she's still like, yo, how is my Andy man missing? Next thing you know, he turns up murdered. And she's like, oh my God. So she shook it. And she's dealing with the mystery of that along with one or two romantic entanglements and the really cute police detective, you know, that is really gorgeous and that she's assisting with the mystery. And it just, it sounds like an absolute riot, doesn't it? And it's the first book in the Tati Poldi series. So if you end up picking this up and liking it, there are more books starring the famous Antipodi that we can just, you know, binge on, just, just putting it out there. Next up is Circe. Circe by Madeline Miller, which, if you just went up, hold up, Noria. Circe? Circe? Yes, Circe. Because the prompt is for you to read a book with a character that centers the main character that is over 50, that is 50 and above, and Circe is way older than 50. Like, she is centuries years old, so she totally can. So if you had Circe by Madeline Miller on your shelves and you've been wanting to read it and have not really gotten the chance to do so, this might be the prompt for you because I repeat, it totally works. Now, what is Circe about if you have no idea? Circe is a character study of some sort, you know, of the goddess Circe from Greek mythology told by the brilliant, amazingly, fantastic mind of Madeline Miller, you know, and she takes us on this journey and Cersei goes from being utterly disregarded to being one of the feared, most feared, most powerful witches in mythology, right? Um, angry and vengeful. I mean, the pigs, people, the pigs, well-deserved, you know, so angry and vengeful to being an older goddess, you know, wise with age, resplendent power, who just simply wants to be. Can you all tell that I love this book? Because I love this book? Like, I really do love this book? Who is surprised? Now, for those that don't know, I work in advertising, um, and I love reading about story. I love reading stories that center women in advertising women who work in advertising their stories and that is something that intrigued me by the next book on the list which is Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney whereby we follow Lillian who is 85 and who decides to take a walk in Manhattan in a Manhattan that is currently on the hunt for a vigilante and as she takes this walk she takes us on this journey through her life and Part of that journey involves her being one of the highest paid women in advertising in her time. And just the concept of that really, it intrigues me because I repeat, I work in advertising and uh, women and getting paid adequately in advertising is totally a thing. If you work in that um, industry, you will know that. So I'm already intrigued by it. I'm also very intrigued about stories that basically chronicle the passing of a time, the changing of a time through the eyes of a character that has lived through these times and is telling us that. And that is what we get with Lillian Boxfish because she has lived this life. She has lived through these times and she is taking us on that journey. So yeah, that's the reason why this book makes a list. But if it is that you would rather read an actual memoir, not a fictional book, a fictional novel that is written like a memoir, if you rather read an actual memoir, then maybe you can consider picking Under One Roof, Lessons I Learned from a Tough Old Woman Living in a Little Old House by Barry Martin and Philip Lehman, which follows um, these two quite popular figures, Barry Martin himself and Edith Wilson Macefield. Now, um, apparently I don't live in the States and I don't, and I don't think it's everybody in the state that will necessarily know of the story, but see in Ballard, Washington, there was a plan to build this big sprawling mall, um, a plan that was torpedoed by the fact that there is a house that is like right in the middle of where the, the mall should be built. Thus, this house is owned by Edith, an octogenarian who does not give a shit, does not want to sell her house, has no interest in selling her house, does not care that you're offering her a million. She is not going to sell her house, damn it. Um, and Barry Martin, who is the head of the um, the construction company that has been taxed with building the mall, who, 
you know, set out to reach out to either, not to try and pressure us to sell the house, but to find out a way in which they can make life comfortable for her if she does decide to sell the house. And he extends, like I said, this offer for help. And he just takes it. And next thing you know, he's driving her to her hair appointment and a friendship blossoms between the two of them. As someone who at age seven had a friend that was like in his 90s and I spent like Saturday mornings, I spent Saturday mornings like plucking out the white hair from his, his rapidly balding head. Yeah, he was practically all white. I'm not sure if it was that he was using dye because younger me and probably older me and I think about like, yo, he shouldn't even have any black hair, but he had some black hair and he had some white hair. And every Saturday I would come and I would be plucking out the white hair and we'll be talking, he'll be telling me about his life, etc. etc. Like stories about friendships with older characters. It just it hits me in the gut. I, I get all the good happy feels from it. So yeah. Next is Jimmy Bluefeather by Kim Ecox, which follows Keb Whiston, who is 95. He thinks he's 95. Um, he stopped celebrating his birthday a while back and stopped taking note of the time. So he thinks he's 95. He might be a little bit older, a little bit younger, but he thinks he's 95. And um, Keb is the last living Kano carver in his village of Jinkat, which is um, in southeast Alaska, right? And when is his grandson, when his grandson writes to him that he has nothing to live for after an accident sees the end of his grandson's budding basketball career, carves the very last of his canoes and takes his grandson on a trip with him for to help them both realize that there's so much more to live for as far as life is concerned. And there is a particular quote from this book that just hit me, that I stumbled on, that hit me, and I just, I have to share it with you. He grabbed a paper towel and dabbed the sweat off his brow and thought about all the old farts in the rest home who sit around killing time until time kills them. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. What to do? Kept straightening up and sealed his mind. It would go south to the city by the sea, the city named for the great chief who said all men were children of the earth, the city of coffee and computers. He had visit his grandson and tell him Raven doesn't care about fame or fortune. Raven doesn't care about diplomas or, degree or degrees. Raven looks for scars, the signs of suffering that gives a man his death. Add this wound to the others no strangers see. Add it and move on because it's the only thing to do. There are two tragedies in life not getting what you want and getting it. That's what he would tell his gifted, tormented grandson. After that, old Keb Whiston would return to Alaska and walk into the woods and lie down and die. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? As someone, like I said, who had an older friend, there is something that you would always notice, which is that older people like telling stories of their lives. Especially if you're friends with them, they will, or related to them, they will tell you, all these stories, some of them slightly exaggerated because of how Atlantic it might be, but some of them are actually true. And that is the case of Sheldon in Norwegian by Night by Derek Miller. The thing though is that Sheldon's family don't really believe all his stories. He tells them about him being an ex-marine and is is accepted that life is accepted that nobody's going to believe him. But when it is that his neighbor is murdered, right, and he realizes that her son's life is in danger. He takes on the child and they both go on the run. This 85-year-old ex-marine and this six-year-old boy who can't speak English. Like, the premise? Very intriguing. My desire to read this book sometime soon? Extremely strong. Then there is Dakota Blues by Lynn Spree, where we follow 50-year-old Karen Grace. Now, this is the first book in the Karen Grace series, by the way. So we follow Karen Grace, who went for her mother's funeral only to hear the news that because of her attending the funeral, she's been fired. So yes, this book can also work for the four capitalism prompts as well. So um, because she attended her mother's funeral, she's been fired. Add the fact that her husband has left her for his pregnant girlfriend and Karen is not having the best days. Now, some people would be all mopey about it, but Karen decides to use this opportunity, to take this as a sign from the universe that this is an opportunity to change her life and the direction it's going. And in that vein, she decides to take her elderly neighbor on a road trip, one last road trip. 
but things don't go exactly as they plan as she planned and that just has me intrigued and asking a lot of questions like what was the initial plan what went wrong i need to read this book so i can have all these questions answered so then there's the sunset gang by warren adler at the heart of which are the residents of the sunset um, village retirement community in florida who prove that you know Older people do have lives, unlike what it is that a lot of younger people actually believe. They have lives, right? They are having sex, they are engaging in drama, they are falling in love and out of it. Sometimes, sometimes their lives are even more interesting than ours. And that is exactly what this book covers. It's a book about living and aging and how to embrace them both. And it's definitely a book that had to make the list and finally we have the story of author true love by elizabeth berg again i think she just she does amazing character driven stories so that's the reason why she's this is a second book on this list we follow author author who is lonely and still mourning the loss of his wife and every afternoon during lunch he goes to the cemetery you know to talk about the lives of everyone around him and whilst talking of course to his wife because he's in the cemetery um and in the cemetery he runs across maddie a teenager who hates school and as such finds her escape in the cemetery and these two unlikely people develop a friendship in fact it is maddie that gives author the name true love to represent his loving nature and just how he positively responds to everything she says no matter how outrageous it might be now add author's nosy neighbor to the mix and you have a book that talks about you know intergenerational friendships and how they can be rewarding to both parties and also how it is that you know family are the people you choose and they are the ones who love us and accept us completely so yeah of a true love i can't wait to read that book that just i'm swaying because i can't wait to read it but yeah those are my recommendations for the fuck ages in front i think this is the shortest video i have made since i started filming this which hallelujah because you all know I've been doing some long videos but um i hope sincerely that this books one you find books that have already been on your shelf from this list and two they lead you into like other books you might be interested in because i'm certain i'm going to be coming back to this list when it is time for me to decide exactly what book i'm going to be reading for the fuck ages in front for the fuckathon um for those that do not know the fuckathon is a month-long readathon that i am hosting in july from july 1st to july 31st i am going to leave the announcement video down in the description bar below we basically read books that say a big fuck you to um the situation slash circumstances slash institutions you know that seek to pull us down that seek to tear us down so it works like it's fun um but yeah i'm also going to leave down in the description bar below all the recommendations videos i've done for all the other prompts as well because there are in total nine prompts eight of them are reading prompts so it's just to help and i have only one more prompt video to go and i'll be done with this recommendations video my plan was to finish them in july and i'm so happy that it seems like i actually will be pulling that off would would but um yeah let me know down drop down below what are some um books with other characters that you recommend that i pick up because i'm always looking for those books just drop them down in the comments down below i know i've not yet updated my google docs with all the recommendations i would do so i just want to do the last video and then sit with that sit with that folder in on monday and like update that list i promise by monday um by monday evening it will be up to date and you can go back and just cross reference and of course i'm taking in taking note of all your suggestions i'm definitely going to put them in the list so no worries about that but yeah that is this video if you liked it please do not forget to give it a big thumbs up check out my other videos subscribe if you want to and if you do decide to subscribe please click on that notification bell so you can know the minute i have a new video go up i make new videos every wednesdays and sundays mostly um that's why you should click on the notification bell because my upload schedule has been all over the place but ideally and hopefully by the next month i would have sorted it out but ideally i make new videos every wednesdays and sundays and i will see you soon until then stay passionate love books love yourself bye